Good morning, everybody. We're here and we're unloading. Just rolling up these straps and waiting for them to come take their pieces off of here. And then I just gotta bring the rest of those up to Maine this afternoon. We arrived last night. We should be out of here soon. So I got here yesterday and I waited here overnight and uh, they sent me just down the street. They have a second location that they're just opening up and that's where this stuff is going to. So my appointment's for 8. I got here at 7. Well, I got here last night but I was here and ready to go at 7 and now I've got the trailer opened up, all the straps rolled up, put away. And I'm just waiting for them to uh, have the time to come and take their stuff off. We'll sign some papers. Give each other a little nod, say thank you. And I'll be off my way to Biddeford, Maine, which is about an hour and a half from here. I'll definitely be able to get those delivered today yet. And then I don't know, uh, we'll see what reload pops up later today, this afternoon. Maybe I'll be headed back up to Canada. Maybe I'll have a reload in Maine or this New England area back up to Canada. I have no idea yet. I, I have a feeling I'm probably going to be going empty into Canada, pick up a load there. That's just a feeling I have. I don't know how reliable that is. But... Oh well, they should be out here soon. We'll be out of here and we'll be trucking. Tiny little neighborhood in here. Gotta come down these narrow streets to get to this commercial industrial area. We are right by the Atlantic coast. One kilometer, turn left on Conan Street.
exit 3 I-95 in New Hampshire. Live free or die. Gotta say, that's my favorite state slogan. I'm just here for coffee. I'm an hour early for my uh, delivery appointment, so I got time. Quickly run in here and grab a shower. Pardon me, a coffee. I'd like to grab a shower. Looking for parking here. Look at all this paid parking.
the way to live or something like that if I remember correctly I haven't been here in a while let's see patience hold on it's coming it's coming right after this exit here the blue sign on our right it says Maine what is the state slogan Maine welcome home the way life should be I knew it I knew it the way life should be that's their state slogan I haven't been here in years when you look at Maine on the map you kind of wonder you know it should have been part of Canada right it goes way up into Canadian territory because remember like, a couple of weeks ago we went to Prince Edward Island and I went through Canada but I had to go way up through Quebec, way over the top of Maine to get there. And then come all the way back down south. Maine is sort of like right in the middle between our Atlantic provinces and Quebec. It's like, you look at it on the map, it's like, it almost looks like it could have been part of Canada. But they're like, nope, America. Here's our exit. So we're on I-95, Maine, exit 32 towards Biddeford. This shouldn't take too long to unload. There's just four skids. They're oversized skids, but same thing. Just bang, 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 bang. They're they're off the trailer, and then I have to give In our office a call. Meters, slide right on Alfred Street, ME 111, and then turn left into 110 meters. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I was on a toll road. That's right. That's right. I have Easy Pass though, so I just drive right through here. Oh, there's no toll booths anyway. Okay. And I gotta turn left. Right. Left. Yeah, I guess during COVID they uh, meters, took out all the toll booths. Alfred Street, ME one eleven. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I think a lot of these. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of these toll booths out here in New England are gone. I think they all used COVID as an excuse to fire all the toll booth employees. And. Uh, make it all contactless which is way better for me not good for the people who are working in those toll booths I'm sure but it's nice now that you can just drive straight through they have automatic tolling I have a little transponder on my window and you drive right under there and it charges your account I do have to pay for my own tolls because I own my truck and I'm on a percentage so all the tolls are my expense. If you're a company driver, the company pays for the tolls. Uh, since I own my truck, I prefer owning my truck and I can uh, have the truck I want, do to it what I want, within reason. I feel like I could have gone straight there. I really feel like I could have gone straight because I'm looking at the map in two kilometers, make a sharp right turn on Elm Street. Yeah, now I gotta make a sharp right turn ahead. And there was a road that went straight through there. Oh, oh well, we're here now. Uh, we're just around the corner anyway, so uh, I'm gonna get these skids off my trailer. And then I'll fill you in on what comes next. It's always kind of an exciting part of the trip. You're like, oh, what's next? Who knows? Who knows? we're all unloaded we're empty and I have my reload unfortunately it's all the way over in Ontario so that's what I kind of figured no loads going back to Canada in this within 500 miles of me right now so to keep me moving I'm gonna go pick up a good load in Burlington Ontario which is pretty much Toronto around Toronto it'll be a full day's drive to get there but we'll go get it on the trailer and that's gonna take us back to Winnipeg through northern Ontario so I'm gonna stop in Sturbridge Massachusetts again I'm gonna be taking 90, I guess, across, crossing at Niagara Falls, uh, but I'm gonna dip down on 84 because they got the cheapest juice for my fleet card at the Flying J there. That's the one that's just chaos all the time. I really wanna take a shower today and I don't really wanna spend more time there than I have to, so I'm debating whether or not I wanna stop there for a shower or just stop there for fuel, and get out of there, and then go to a more convenient, less chaotic Pilot Flying J and shower there later. I'll see what the parking situation's like when I get to that truck stop. If there's lots of parking, 
I've got my shower bag ready right there I'll quickly zip in if, if, if there's a parking spot and it's a safe one I'll, I'll quickly throw the truck in the parking spot get a shower if one's available run in and shower and then fuel on my way out and then get out of there as fast as I can I I really don't like that truck stop parking lot it makes me anxious it's just not set up well it's so busy it's so busy there but we'll see what happens. I gotta grab fuel there anyways because the fuel there is way cheaper than anyone else. I think our price was like 407 a gallon. And the nearest closest price would be here in Maine, 412 a gallon. Or once I get into New York heading towards Canada, all the fuel prices there are 420 a gallon or 435 a gallon or up. So it gets more expensive into New York. The cheapest for me is in Massachusetts there for some reason I don't know I don't control the fuel prices I just I just open my app and it tells me where our fleet cards are getting the best best deals and that's where I'm gonna go fuel cheap juice even if it's chaos getting in there and even if it gets my anxiety up hey we're saving saving dollars I need to because the last time my truck was in the shop I just got the bill for it today and it was a little a lot bigger than I thought it would be so I need to make some dollars again. Uh, we got the truck serviced, right? Uh, my fan, my engine fan on the front, the hub had to be rebuilt. Not, It wasn't just the belt that needed to be replaced. The hub had to be rebuilt. So they did that for me. I had to get uh, a brake drum replaced or a brake replaced on my front axle, my steers. And I had my uh, uh, slack adjuster, slack adjuster replaced as well. And there's a couple other things. What else did they do? Oh, they did a... The truck's good to go now, though. They always take really good care of my truck, and uh, I'm glad that they that they did that. So big thanks to PBX. They did really good work, like usual. Now I gotta pay the bill. So, you, know, you gotta get good work. Comes at a price. <laughs> That's okay. We're just gonna keep rolling and making money. And sniffing out all the, all the, all the cheap juice. Sniff, sniffing out wherever I can get the cheapest fuel. Massachusetts is the winner today. Coming up to our exit, it used to be exit one. Now I think it's what, exit four or five? So Massachusetts went and changed all their exit numbers. Can someone explain why? Because <laughs> they had to change all their signs and add more signs. Because look at this, there's like those yellow signs. This is old exit one coming up. So it must have been super expensive to do this because they had to redo all of the exit signs across the entire state and not only redo them, they also had to add more like yellow signs that say, this is old exit so-and-so, it's now exit this. So what reason did they have to go ahead and change every single exit in the state? See, even Karen says it's exit one, it's exit three. They changed them all. That is so confusing because I've updated my GPS and it still doesn't have the right exit numbers here. Good thing that they've gone and put all those extra little signs, but. Take exit one, Mashapong Road, Southbridge, Sturbridge and then keep to the left at 580 meters. Like it's not that bad. I've been able to figure it out. I haven't gotten lost or anything. I'm just. It seems like that'd be a huge, like, expensive task to redo all the signs and add extra signs. Like, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the bottom of the sign here. So now they had to redo it and so that it said exit three, but they also had to add another sign underneath it that says old exit one. At 500 meters, keep to the left on Southbridge, Sturbridge, and then turn left in 16 meters. It just seems like a very expensive, confusing way to, uh, throw everybody else or throw everybody off on the highway meters. keep to the left on Southbridge, Sturbridge and then turn left in 16 meters so anyone from Massachusetts or anyone who understands what's going on I'd love to know the reasoning I'm sure there's a good reason right they wouldn't just do that for no reason and has anyone else noticed this and have they been confused by it All right, on the other side of that bridge, right? Or is it that way? No, it's right there, okay. This is a... You are turning this way, I am turning that way, you are going that way, nobody's there, it is clear, let's go. 
as I pull in, I'm gonna check to see if they have showers available. I don't think they will. This is a pretty busy one. They have 12 showers available, and so far the app has told me that there's none. I was able to get a shower. There was one available. It came available just as I got here as I rolled into the lot, so I quickly reserved it. Quickly got myself into a parking spot. I know I'm not gonna be staying here overnight, so. Ran inside, grabbed a quick shower, now I'm just gonna grab some fuel, and we'll get out of this chaotic truck stop. Hopefully there's no lineup. When I came out of the shower, there was, wasn't was much of a lineup for fuel. Oh, we got another guy coming back here now. Uh, looks like the lineup has gotten a little longer now though, so slowly meander my way over there. As soon as this guy lets me go. Okay, never mind. It looked longer. There's only about two trucks deep. This guy's definitely not gonna let me get in front of him. I'm not gonna let that guy over there get in front of me either. Everybody for themselves. Let's see. Let's see. Is one available all the way on the end here? Looks like the lineups are a little bit shorter over here. Hopefully they're not shorter for a reason. Looks like this guy's done fueling already, probably waiting for the guy in front of him to move. That didn't take long. Nice. I picked right. Sometimes you just get lucky. Now I don't need full tanks, just need to top them up a bit. All right, let's get out of here. That actually wasn't that bad of a visit. It got a little chaotic and a little busy. Yeah. But it's definitely been much worse before. And I got my shower and my fuel, so I'm happy. We'll see how far we can get yet. We got about six hours and 20 minutes available to drive. I don't think we're gonna quite make it to Canada, but maybe. Which way is the 84? to get 
right here. So I figured it was worth it. We'll back up to 90 and start heading west. I might make it into Canada, you know? Because I have six and a half or six hours, 20 minutes available for the US. Once I hit the Canadian border, I have more hours available to me.
heard that there was like, uh, oh, here's the rain. Here it is. Yeah, that's what I thought. The weather watch is saying that there was hail the size of like one inch in diameter. That's huge. What, isn't that like the size of a golf ball? And the wind gusts up to 60 mile an hour. Yikes, it's crazy here. Yeah, look at those trees. Wow. Amazing how just, just going over the hill completely changes the weather. I know you guys can't feel it there, but I'm just, <laughs> the wind is trying to push me all over the road here. Gotta real pay, really pay attention to keep between the lines here. We're driving straight into it, I think. As we go around this corner down here, it's gonna get a little interesting. Tired. Very tired. We're nearby Tire, New York, and I'm very tired. See what I did there? <laughs> T Y R E, New York. Yeah, there's a petrol stopping center that I found now down I 90. This is where I decided to stop. It's been raining pretty hard, and as soon as the sun went down, the asphalt that they they must have just repaved the freeway with like black, black asphalt and they haven't painted the lines properly. So I was having a hard time seeing where the lines on the road were. So I'm like, I think it's time to pull off and we'll continue this uh, adventure in the morning when I can see where I'm going. But even like, like my lights weren't reflecting off the asphalt because the asphalt was so black that I couldn't see where I was going. I, and I could tell that a lot of other drivers were having the same issues because they were all over the road sort of all we're kind of trying to guess where the lanes are and there's tons of traffic and then there's construction zones with no lines painted it, it was uh, uh, a little bit anxiety inducing so I figured you know what I was going to go to Flying J down in Pembroke I think that's what it's called Pembroke further down the road I'm like you know what I looked on trucker path it said that the truck parking was already full I'm like ah, okay well I'm not going to go all the way there and risk my life and everyone else's life just to get to a full parking lot and not be able to park right at the end of my day when I don't have any hours left to go look anywhere else. So I saw a petrol stopping center here and I pulled in and there's tons of open spots here. It's a huge truck stop. Petros are always really nice. Uh, in Canada's Petro Pass, it's very different than Petrol Stopping Center in the US, total different companies, different countries. But the Petro Stopping Centers in the US are, are really nice and this one is no exception. So I'm gonna go to bed right here and uh, I can get a good sleep tonight. We're not in that big of a rush. They need me there tomorrow, one or two o'clock, sometime in the afternoon, before four o'clock to get loaded. And I got five pieces that I'm getting loaded with, so it won't even take that long. They'll throw the five pieces on, I'll strap them down, roll the ro roll tight closed, and we'll start making our way towards Winnipeg. I'm thinking tomorrow my goal is probably gonna be to make it to like North Bay or something, because I'm gonna take Highway 11 around it's just easier on my truck. It's flatter land. I don't have to have so many hills to climb. <coughs> I'm only going to have a load of 30,000 pounds. So it's not like I'm at max weights or anything. But I still, I like to take 11. Uh, it's just flatter highways. So I'm hoping to make it to North Bay tomorrow. And then we'll see where we get to the next day. Maybe Nipigon or Thunder Bay. Somewhere in there. And then the day after that, I have to deliver this in Winnipeg. Oh, not this, but the load I'm picking up, I've delivered in Winnipeg, and then I'll be going home for a little bit, I think. So we'll figure that out as we go. Let's worry about today. Today, I need to put this together and go to bed. Tomorrow, we'll worry about picking up our freight, and we'll see what happens after that. So remember, guys, be safe. Stay safe. Make sure to drive safe out there.